113 Questions About Evolution with John Perry. Question number one. What is life? Biology is the study of living things. It's the study of life. And you would think that because biology is the study of life, biologists would have some sort of a definition for what life is. Something that clearly explains what the living things are and what living things are not. But such a definition cannot be found in a biology textbook. They just skip right over it. You might think that defining life would be easy. I mean, even a child can tell the difference between a, a cow, which is alive, and a rock, which is not alive. Things get tricky, though, when you consider things like viruses. Some people don't consider a virus to be a living thing. Viruses can reproduce, they can evolve, but they don't have cells. They themselves are not a cell. They're just genes encased in protein. Another really interesting example of something that we might want to consider to be alive, but a lot of people don't consider to be alive, would be a plasmid. A plasmid is a loop of DNA that gets inside of bacteria and can actually control the bacteria temporarily. When the bacteria comes in contact with another one, the plasmid will take over, make it fuse with that other bacteria, and will then uh, go and infect that bacteria as well. So these are really strange, you could call them creatures, Maybe they're alive, maybe they're not. It depends on who you're talking to. It depends on who you're asking. But these things can reproduce and evolve inside of a living cell, independently of that cell's reproduction and evolution. Very fascinating. In between things. Because living things are so complicated, and because they're constantly evolving and changing, some philosophers have said that it's actually a pointless endeavor to try and define life. There's actually a large group of philosophers that don't like it when we try and define anything that's that's complicated. Well, a few years back, there were a group of researchers for NASA. These were exobiologists, people who are studying the possibility of life on other planets. And these guys said, you know what, philosophers? We are going to do it anyways. We are going to come up with a definition for life. And they did. Today, it's known as the NASA definition for life. And it goes like this. Life is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. Let me say that again. Life is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. I absolutely love this definition for life. I think that everyone should adopt it. And the reason that I like it so much is that it helps us, especially when we're studying the origin of life, it helps us focus in on a really clear, easy to remember definition that will help us know what it is that we're looking for. Now, some people have expressed concern saying that, well, it might be too constricting of a definition, and so it might actually impede us from discovering the truth about the origin of life. But to that, I would just say, look, you have a definition, and if you want to work within that definition, you can. And if you don't like the definition, you want to prove it wrong, well, now you've got this really nice, neat little definition. You can go try and find evidence for why it's wrong. You can prove it wrong. Treat this definition as a working hypothesis, something to be supported or disproven. So now let's just look at this definition piece by piece and figure out what all this stuff means. What they mean when they say that living things are self-sustaining is that within a specific environment, a living creature can, it can hold its own, right? For a bear, that environment might be the woods. A bear can hold its own within the woods. For a virus, that environment might be a living cell. Under this definition, viruses and plasmids count as living creatures. When they say that living things are chemical systems, what they mean here is that living things are driven by normal chemical reactions. Researchers used to think a long time ago that there was some sort of a vital force or a supernatural entity inside of living things that helped them be alive, that animated them. But we now know that this is not the case, or at least it does not seem to be the case. The more we look at life, the more we understand life, the more we see that it's really, it's just chemistry. Life is chemistry. We are chemical systems. Now, if you don't like this idea that living things are chemical systems, if you want to believe that there's some supernatural or unknown force that powers life, Great. 
prove us wrong and we'll have to redefine this definition, you will be famous. Last but not least, living things are capable of Darwinian evolution. And what we mean here is that because living things reproduce, they make copies of themselves, natural selection can select for or against different variations of those copies, allowing living creatures to adapt to their environment across multiple generations. This is why living things are so good at getting along within a specific environment. It's because they've evolved to get along in that environment. Descent with modification acted upon by selection equals Darwinian evolution. So there you have it. Life is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. I love this definition because it allows us to include viruses and plasmids in that definition, and also because it makes us ask some really strange questions. It makes us think about life in new ways. For example, is a single person a living thing? Because according to this definition, you know, I, all by myself, cannot evolve. I cannot reproduce, right? But you see there in the definition, capable of Darwinian evolution, I am capable of finding a mate and then reproducing and therefore evolving. But then what about, what about an older woman that's gone through menopause and she can no longer reproduce? Does that mean that she's no longer alive? Well, of course not, because her cells are reproducing all the time and her cells are evolving all the time. Hopefully not uh, too quickly because too much cellular evolution can give rise to cancer. But, of course, she is a living creature. Her cells, at least, fit the bill. So, what is life? Life is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. Next question.